Good evening, I'm Robert Satloff. I'm the Executive Director of the Washington Institute, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this, our fifth Scholars Statesman Dinner. Let me take this moment to extend special thanks first to the honorary chairs of our dinner, Merrill Tisch and Howard Berkowitz. And to our dinner co-chairs, Vanessa and Tony Beyer, Ahuva and Martin Gross, Lori and Zach Schreiber, and Carol and Roger Einiger, regrettably, cannot be with us tonight. I would like to recognize two diplomats who are here this evening one from Egypt and one from Israel. The permanent representative of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Magdi Abdelaziz, and the deputy permanent <laughs> and the deputy permanent the deputy permanent representative of the state of Israel, Chaim Waxman. Their presence here tonight honors our award winners. Thank you for joining us. This evening is the most important event on the Institute's annual calendar. But, as John Shapiro said in his wonderful remarks earlier, we don't just do lovely dinners in New York City. Our motto is ideas, action, impact. And we try to live by that motto every day. One idea we live by animates this evening's program. The idea that sound policymaking lies at the intersection of scholarship or knowledge and statesmanship or leadership. Another idea is that we are an American interest think tank committed to advancing American interests in the Middle East. To that end, I am proud to say, we are virtually alone among institutions in Washington in rejecting all donations from any foreign source, individuals, institutions, corporations, foundations, and governments. We at the Washington Institute survive thanks to you, American citizens committed to strengthening America's engagement in the Middle East. So for that, thank you very much. One more idea that sets us apart from various institutions is our brand. Our brand is expertise. Some organizations may be flashier. Some may have slicker talking heads with better coiffed hair. But none know their subjects better. None are more exhaustive in their research. And none devise more creative solutions for vexing problems than the scholars and fellows of the Washington Institute. You have already met our newest fellow, my friend Dennis Ross, who truly exemplifies what I have just said. It is no understatement to lament the fact that the government of the United States has lost an unparalleled one-man repository of 25 years of knowledge and experience when Dennis left his office on Friday night. But Dennis is not alone. He joins a team of experts who know no peer. Many of them can't be here tonight. That's because they're out doing their jobs. Patrick Clausen is in Saudi Arabia. Soner Chaptai is in Turkey. Matt Levin is conferring with counter-terror experts at The Hague and two young scholars, Eric Traeger and Margaret Weiss, a former Marsha Robbins Wilf young scholar, are monitoring elections in Egypt. So in their honor, and in honor of the outstanding scholars of the Institute who are here with us tonight, I ask all of our fellows to please rise and take a bow.
Friends, we now turn to a program that is new to this year's dinner, the announcement of the 2011 Washington Institute Book Prize. Four years ago, we at the Institute established a prize for the most outstanding nonfiction book on Middle East politics directed toward an American audience. And thanks to the generosity of Shelley and Michael Casson, who committed special funds to the first five years of this project, we have been fortunate to make this one of the most lucrative literary prizes in the world, with $30,000 going to our gold medal winner, $15,000 to the silver medal winner, and $5,000 to the bronze medal winner. Now, they may, that may not be enough to convince a young scholar or an enterprising writer to take up book writing as a profession, but it is enough to send a message that serious people care about the writing of serious volumes. And even today, especially today, that is an important message. There are at least two people in this room who know exactly what I'm talking about, and I would like to recognize them tonight. They are lions of the book business. If you, like me, are someone whose last act before turning out the lights and kissing your husband and wife goodnight is not reading one more email, but rather closing that delicious book and setting it on your night table where you know it will be the next morning, that you should join me in thanking these two people. They are Bob Bernstein, the legendary publisher of Random House, founder of Human Rights Watch, and now the driving force behind advancing human rights. Bob, please stand and take a bow. And secondly, let me recognize Peter Osnos, the founder and editor of Public Affairs, whose clients include one of our honorees tonight, Natan Sharansky. Peter, please stand and take a bow. <laughs> to these two gentlemen who have protected books and protected the people who write them, thank you, thank you, thank you. To announce this year's book prize, I'm delighted to call Shelley Casson to join me on the stage. <laughs> Shelley is a proud member of the Washington Institute's Board of Directors and chair of our development effort. We at the Institute do book prizes the old-fashioned way. The authors have to earn their awards. Our meticulous book prize administrator, our Wexler Fromer Fellow, Dr. Martin Kramer, runs a very tight ship. Where's Martin? Martin, please rise and take a bow. Every year, we have a jury of three outstanding scholars, journalists, or policy practitioners who examine dozens of books and in several rounds of review and assessment, whittle down their choices until they come up with our winners. Martin is so meticulous that he has created a totally blind jury system. We don't even let the jurors know who the other jurors are until the prize is announced. So let me first reveal this year's panel of jurors. They are Elliot Abrams, Senior Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, former Deputy National Security Advisor in the Bush Administration. Ellen Lapson, the President of the Henry L. Stimson Center, 
former director for the Middle East at the National Security Council, former national intelligence officer for the Middle East, and Professor Walter Russell Mead, the James Clark Chase Professor of Foreign Affairs and Humanities at Bard College and one of America's leading public intellectuals. And now, Shelley, to announce our winners, please. Thank you, Rob. Let me start by saying Michael and I are really very honored to have been asked to support this very important endeavor, and it's really been our pleasure uh, to do so. We'll start with the bronze prize, and the bronze prize goes to Stéphane Lacroix for Awakening Islam, The Politics of Religious Dissent in Contemporary Saudi Arabia, published by the Harvard University Press. The terra incognita of Saudi Islam is explored in a scholarly way for the first time by Stéphane Lacroix, drawing on interviews with Islamists who rarely, who rarely give them and on hard-to-find texts, Lacroix goes beyond post-9-11 generalizations to paint a complex landscape of the struggle of, over the role of Islam in the Saudi Kingdom. This unique and deeply informed work is bound to influence America's own sharp debate about Saudi Arabia's relation to Islamism in the Kingdom and beyond it. Our silver medal goes to Michael J. Totten, The Road to Fatima Gate. The Road to Fatima Gate, the Beirut Spring, the Rise of Hezbollah, and the Iranian War Against Israel, and Counter Books. Michael Totten's narrative of the rise and fall of Lebanese democracy is a harrowing tale, grippingly told. It revolves around Hezbollah's brazen challenge to the Lebanese state, Lebanon's own disastrous politics, and the ceaseless maneuvers of Israel and Syria. Totten's storytelling is energetic and engaging, yet his analysis is always thoughtful and on target. Lebanon's present sad chapter hasn't ended. This book is the finest introduction to the turmoil yet to come. I don't hear it, but I did see my husband. <laughs> uh, and the gold medal goes to Peter L. Bergen. Peter? <laughs> Thanks for being with us tonight, Peter. And the book is The Longest War, The Enduring Conflict Between America and Al-Qaeda, Free Press. Peter Bergen draws on years of meticulous reporting to uncover the thinking of Al-Qaeda's top strategists and the pitched battles in Washington over U.S. policy. The 10-year war against Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and elsewhere is now the longest in American history. Yet while terror groups remain a threat, Bergen's riveting account shows how American grit thwarted Al-Qaeda's drive to become the acclaimed champion of Islamism at a price that Americans still ponder and debate. Thank you once again. Friends, thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you to our award winners. Thank you especially to Peter Bergen. And congratulations not only for this award, but please join me in congratulating Peter, whose wife just gave birth a week ago.